Here's my in-depth review of the Retro Flag handheld controller. A lot of you have been asking, Andy, when's that retro flag review dropping? And well, it's today. I needed some extra time to test some stuff out. And well, we're going to cover everything and more today. Oh, and AJ and I from the PlayStation channel are now doing a podcast. So you can find the link down in the description and at the end of this video, because you don't want to miss that out. Anyway, subscribe. Let's crack on. So what is it? Well, this is a GameCube inspired Joy-Con alternative for handheld gaming only for both the Nintendo Switch and the Switch OLED. But instead of Joy-Cons, we actually dock the tablet part of the Switch into the controller and it connects via the USB-C port on the base acting as a wired controller. You need to ensure that the wired Pro controller connection is enabled in the system settings Otherwise it won't work. So for those that don't know, let me round up all the features it has before we dive in. So it has power delivery, so you can still charge your switch quickly via the port on the base. It has button swap, turbo, gyro motion controls, rumble, a full-sized D-pad, and the best of all, it has hall effect sensing joystick modules, which not only means it can never drift, but it also means it has much lower dead zone than traditional potential geometer joysticks. Okay, Andy, but what doesn't it have? So there's no NFC support for Amiibos. There's no IR sensor either, but to me, those don't really matter. Whilst it does have rumble, it doesn't have HD rumble, and despite being GameCube inspired, it doesn't have analog triggers. But again, that doesn't matter since there's only a couple of games that support that anyway. There's no wake from sleep, but just Press the power button. Lastly, there's no internal battery on the controller itself, so it does leach power from the switch, which will impact battery life. I absolutely love the design. Taking inspiration from the GameCube, we have a transparent purple colorway with large colored face buttons and GameCube style joysticks all in the traditional Switch layout. So whilst it's not actually true GameCube theme, like the Nixie Wizard, it's more just GameCube inspired. But this means you'll have zero issues playing all of your Switch games as intended, as you're not having to navigate the weird GameCube layout. So it's ideal for me, because I want GameCube nostalgia without hindering gameplay, and that's what this offers. The build quality is excellent, it feels sturdy and looks great, and I like the felt backing to protect your Switch when sliding it in too. When installed, the entire unit is pretty heavy, but I myself haven't had any issues with the weight, but maybe you will. One thing that I must bring up, and this is really sad and upset me a little bit, the little kind of metal springy bracket bits that hold your Switch into place once it's slid like in, they do scratch your rails on the actual switch itself. So I now have scratches on either side and I'm pretty sure it's because of this. As it's designed for the original Switch 2, we've got two vent holes cut out for the original Switch's intake fans. There's a good enough gap at the bottom too for the Switch OLED's intakes, which are found at the bottom of the OLED. I had no issues with heat at all. As opposed to the Joy-Con's flat grips, this is so much more ergonomic. We get controller style handles on each side for comfort, which definitely makes them nicer to hold, but they're not 100% ergonomic in design. As the left and right sides are symmetrical, it makes getting to the lower place C stick on the right side that much more difficult. Ideally, it should have been offset more to create a better angle for your thumb to naturally reach the stick. The only device I've ever come across that achieves this correctly is the Satisfy Zen Grip Pro, which has like an odd look to it, but the design accommodates the right stick for a truly ergonomic grip. With the retro flag, you need to kind of adopt a looser grip on the side to let your thumb reach that stick correctly. This could be an issue for those that want to lock the controller into the palms of their hands for stability. The other design issue is the lack of support for <laughs> inserting and removing your games. Because there's no notch cut out at the top to access the port easily, and that means swapping cartridges means you have to actually slide the switch out 
to get to it. And this, you know, could have been avoided by adding a notch. Sadly, the rumble isn't adjustable. Instead, it has what I'd call adaptive rumble. So for example, a small jump will be less rumble than like a gunshot would be. I do like this. Other controllers I've tested are often just set to give out the same amount of rumble no matter what. Now it is slower and more of a heavy rumble, but you know, I do prefer it to the very fast and loud rumble of some of the other third party Joy-Cons. It's still not HD rumble though, and there is a little bit of a negative that I've noticed. When it wants to use as little rumble as possible, you can almost hear like an electrical whine if you have your game volume off. You can't notice it at all if there's any game volume on, but on mute, it is there and I did find it a little bit annoying. But if the game is kicking out loads of rumble, you won't hear any noises at all. I'm not a huge gyro user, but sadly the gyro just really isn't very good. So be warned. If I tilt the switch side to side, it doesn't move the gyro at all. It will go up and down fine, but when I move left and right, you need to either completely move your body around or angle the corners up and down. So the gyro on the actual Joy-Cons are far better and way more accurate. But of course the joysticks are really what we're here for, right? <laughs> this is the main feature of this. The Hall Effect Sensing joysticks means they will never drift. Standard potentiometer modules used in normal controllers and in the Joy-Cons themselves will develop drift at some point as it uses contact to input the signal and this wears down over time or gets dust in it or whatever and it does make it drift. Hall Effect uses a magnetic field with no contact at all that not only means they can't drift but it also means they're more accurate with less dead zone. So both within the Calibrate control sticks menu and within games I've not experienced any dead zone at all. They're crazily accurate which is a huge Plus. This is the best D-pad I've felt on any Joy-Con alternative that I've tested, and I've tested quite a lot. It just feels great to me. I mean, the face buttons are great too, with no pre or post travel, and they are all consistent. The bumpers are ever so slightly inconsistent though, so my left bumper is slightly more clicky compared to the right bumper, and the ZL and ZR triggers have a nice physical design and feel good under your fingers, but I did notice that if I press super lightly, then they don't actually actuate. Maybe I'm pressing just a little bit too lightly, but once I noticed and pressed a little bit harder on purpose, they engaged just fine. But I have seen loads of people commenting like, hey, I've just bought these and one of the triggers is sticking. It seems to be more than just like a couple people. I've probably seen like four comments now from people saying that that trigger like gets stuck. I've not had an issue. If you have an issue, I'd just return them and ask for a replacement. Now the turbo works well, so you can assign turbo to a button and it will repeat the input for you whilst the button is held, or you can assign auto turbo, which will repeat the press whilst it's not held. So no issues there. Another feature I really like is button swap. So hold the two buttons down that you want to swap and press the turbo button and those buttons will change over. Press and hold the turbo button and press the buttons again to assign. Now this worked perfectly for me, but you can't use button swap and turbo at the same time, unfortunately. But I did really like the fact that you can reassign like R3, so the joystick click with like a face button. You can like swap the buttons around. It's really cool. Now in my first impressions video, everyone was saying, you've got to test it, see if it's dockable. And I was like, ooh, I don't want to break my switch, but go on then for you. So I tested it out using my Skull & Co jump gate dock plugged into the USB-C port of the retro flag, but sadly, no dice. As I suspected, it didn't work because this is just a power delivery port. So it only supports charging, not data transfer. Once I plugged the dock in and got it all set up and everything, my switch just turned on as if I was charging it. So sadly, no, it's not dockable. If you want to dock your switch, take it out of the controller and just put it in your normal dock. So what about price and availability? Well, here in the UK, you still can't get them. I've seen a couple of resellers on Amazon trying to sell them like again, I suppose, for about 50 pounds. Originally in America, they were $50, but now they seem to be $60. And in Canada as well, they're $60. But what do I actually think of these? So overall, as a whole, 
I actually love this controller. So for handheld only, it's been my go-to. Out of everything I've been testing, I keep gravitating to this one. And I think it's because it's just overall much nicer to hold than the Joy-Cons. And that build quality is really nice, like off the shell itself. The face buttons and the D-pad are just great. The Hall effect sticks are amazingly accurate and won't ever drift. The GameCube aesthetic gives me so much nostalgia that I absolutely love. But obviously there are some setbacks. The rumble isn't the best and it does whine at low levels. The gyro just straight up sucks. There's no cutaway for easy cartridge access. It leeches power from the switch itself so that will impact battery life. It's not dockable. It's awkward to reach that right joystick because it's not as ergonomic as like the Satisfy Zen Grip Pro is. And it scratched my switch. <laughs> I'm so OCD with stuff like that. So um, yeah, that upset me a little bit, but the damage is done. I suppose. But despite all those setbacks, if you can overlook them because you have lots of GameCube nostalgia like me, right? I actually really, really like this controller. I don't know what it is. There's enough reasons for me not to like it, but I do and I'm going to continue to use it. So if Waluigi came and stole it from me, would I buy it again? Yeah. Yeah, I would. So there you go. That's been my review of the Retro Flag handheld controller. Let me know your thoughts down in the description. Did you pick one up? Are you going to? Are you put off by some of the things that I've told you here today? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. And whilst you're down there, subscribe. Go and check out mine and AJ's podcast over here and subscribe to that channel too for long form discussions on all things gaming. So check that out and check out another Joy-Con alternative review or video or whatever just down there and make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.